I have a ton of products sitting in front of me, 15 to be per spice. <laughs> Whoops. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Or if you are new here, then welcome. I would love it if you would consider subscribing. Today we're going to be doing rapid reviews. I haven't done one of these videos in a hot minute. I don't know why I stopped doing them, but we're going to start them back up. What it is, is I collect a bunch of items that I have added to my collection over the past however many weeks, and I give you really quick bite-sized reviews of them. So I have 15 items in front of me. I'm going to try to spend no more than about a minute to a minute and a half per item. Strap in, let's dive into this. I'm gonna start with lip products and then we will move on to other things. And I've got quite a few lip products to talk about. So first up is what I'm wearing on my lips today. This is from Juvia's Place and it is in the shade Hashtag 2020. First of all, the packaging is top notch. It is just so stinking pretty. Also, shout out to my nails. I'm gonna be talking about those in an upcoming video, but I mean, how pretty are they, really? Okay, back to the lipstick. Comes up, it's got a nice little groove right in there. I find it's very, very easy to apply. It just hugs the lip so nicely. There is a very slight scent to it. A little bit on the sweet side, not quite as strong as like a MAC lipstick, but along the same lines. What sells me on this, aside from the shade, because it's beautiful, is the formula. It is so smooth and so comfortable. It is a matte finish. Let me bring my mirror right up so I can... Yeah, it is a matte finish. Maybe like a, a demi-matte, like it's not a harsh matte, but it's not drying at all. It's not uncomfortable. As I move my mouth and wear it throughout the day, it doesn't pill, it doesn't get gummy, it doesn't just get gross like sometimes matte lipsticks do. It is an incredibly comfortable formula to wear. I wish I had bought more than just one. I'm gonna have to place another order. That's just all there is to it. Another lipstick that I recently picked up is from Patrick Ta. And again, just this packaging is so beautiful. It reminds me very much of Tom Ford really clean lines, nice rose gold. You can see it's very reflective. The shade that I picked up is Oh She's Single, and it's this beautiful nude shade here. I'll do a hand swatch for you. And again, this formula is incredible. Once again, you have sort of this like demi matte or a soft matte, if you will, where Yes, it's matte, but there's just a little tiny bit of a sheen to it, just, just a hint of it. Again, the formula is incredibly, incredibly comfortable to wear. It slides on like velvet. It lasts a really long time. If you are subscribed to Britt Clark's channel, you will have seen her reviews on these as well. She has brighter colors and she says that they stain her lips. So it is a very long lasting lipstick for her. Because of the shade that I bought, it doesn't do that same staining effect, but I still do find that I get very good wear time out of it. And the amount of time that it is on my lips, it is incredibly comfortable. I can't say enough good things about this formula. Next up, I picked up two lipsticks from Propa Beauty and I have the shades Made It and Finesse. I've already swatched them on my hand for you. So this is Made It and this is Finesse. I love both of them. This to me just screams fall and this one is like the perfect nude shade for my skin tone. I love it so, so much. As you can see, they have like a satin kind of finish to them. And once again, they are incredibly comfortable to wear. Here is what the casing looks like. I love that it's got this like little unique shape to it and then it just pulls up like this and again there's that little bit of a groove on the end. I find it's very easy to apply these and once again there's no tugging, there's no discomfort with this formula. It is just a beautiful lipstick to wear and again I wish I had picked up more shades. Wanted to start with the two, but I can see myself ordering more from their line because they are just so beautiful. 
The next product I have talked about before on my channel, these are the Lifter Glosses from Maybelline, but they bear repeating. They are so good. I have the shade Stone and the shade Petal. This one here is Stone and over here is Petal. You can see that there's good pigmentation to them. Obviously, they're very shiny. They are a lip gloss. I don't know that the camera will really pick it up on Petal, but there is a little bit of micro glitter in there. But once applied, you don't feel any grittiness on your lips at all. And it's just an incredibly comfortable gloss to wear. I, at the risk of sounding like a snob, sometimes drugstore glosses leave me wanting more. Either they're really not pigmented or they're sticky or they just like travel into the corners of my mouth. They're just altogether not a nice experience and that is not the case with these. They're so beautiful. There's no stickiness to the gloss. They last a good amount of time for being a gloss. I wouldn't expect like eight hours of wear or anything like that. Obviously they're going to transfer, but they stay put. They don't feather up. They don't get like those like strings or anything like that. It's just a very comfortable gloss to wear. It has a great big doe foot applicator, which I actually really like for a gloss. I'm not big on the brushes and all that kind of stuff. This is the kind of applicator that I like. It's just really easy to apply and away you go. And is there a scent? Like a hint of a scent, but I, can, I can't figure out what that is and it's very, very faint. So if you're looking for a gloss that's on the more affordable end of things, these ones from Maybelline are a definite winner in my eyes. The last lip product that I have to talk about is the newest shade from Fenty. This is in the shade Underdog and it's one of her Stunna lip paints. Here it is on the hand and if that doesn't scream fall winter, I don't know what does. I love it. As soon as I saw the promo pics for this, I knew I was going to order it. This kind of shade is right up my alley. I love vampy lips. I just, mm, they speak to my soul. And I really love the Stunna lip paints as well. I will say I had bought the very first one when they first came out, Uncensored, I think it's called the Bright Red. And that one, when I watched reviews, people were like, oh, it's transfer proof. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. They tweaked their formula though. I. I don't know if they ever mentioned that they did, but I've bought quite a few of those Stunna lip paints and all the other ones after that first one were far more transfer proof. Maybe not 100%, but definitely they had a lot more dry down than that first one did and this is no exception. It doesn't bleed on me, which is so important for such a dark shade. If it goes up and like feathers up in the lip line, it looks atrocious. This one does not do that to me. It is very opaque. I did find with the black one, I can't remember what the black one's called, I could dig it out, but it doesn't matter. The black Stunna lip paint, it wasn't as opaque as I wanted and so I had to build it up and that kind of messes with the comfort of the formula. This one, I do not need to build it up, I don't have to wear a lip liner underneath it. It's just, it's just so very, very beautiful. Earlier in this video, when I was talking about the Patrick Ta lipstick, I mentioned Britt Clark and I'm going to mention her again because she teamed up with BK Beauty to create a brush bundle and she nailed it. These brushes are fantastic. I, I bought them because I wanted to support Brit and if I got good brushes out of it, so much the better. I hadn't tried anything from BK Beauty. Imagine my delight when I used particularly this one, the slanted foundation brush. This is the 101. When you pick up her bundle, you get the choice of this brush or one with a rounded top. I cannot recommend this one enough. First time I used it, I was absolutely in love. It is perfection in a brush. It truly is. It is the right shape. It's the right size, the right density. It is so soft. I find that it just blends my makeup flawlessly. I have another brush and I've mentioned this in my recent live stream, but I have a brush from Delium Brushes very similar in terms of the shape, like the cut of the bristles, but you can see that this one is bigger than the BK Beauty. And I'm going to give the win to the BK Beauty. I like the Delium. I really do. I love this one. It's just, it's got the right amount of stiffness to the bristles where it just blends the makeup beautifully, but there's still a lot of give, like they do bend. So it's just, 
it's just an enjoyable experience to apply my foundation. That might make me sound like a gigantic nerd, but it's the truth. It's so soft, blends everything beautifully. God, I love it. The powder brush that she put in there as well, this one is the 104. It looks rather small, and yet it just blends everything perfectly. It applies my powder nicely. I can use it under my eye because it's precise enough for it. I absolutely adore that brush. And then she's also included three eye brushes as well. So this one here is the 207, a nice big blending one over here, the 201, and then a more precise crease brush here. And this is the 202. And they're fantastic. You can do an entire eye look with just these three brushes. Her set is extended throughout September. It's going to be linked down below as well as her affiliate code to save you 10% if you do decide to get the bundle. I highly recommend, you're not gonna be disappointed. I may sound like I'm biased because I love Britt Clark, but I'm not kidding about these brushes. They speak for themselves, they are phenomenal. Since I was just talking about brushes and base makeup, let's talk about concealer. And this one here is from Kevin Aquan. I hate the name of it, but I'm gonna say it anyways just so you know what it is. It's the Sensual Skin Enhancer. It's a concealer by any other name. Name aside, it's fantastic. It, like, I've barely made a dent in it and I have used it a bunch of times already, but just the tiniest little bit goes a long way and it offers like amazing coverage. So I just literally like just tap my finger into it, just get like the tiniest little dot and that does both of my eyes no problems whatsoever. It blends out nicely. It doesn't crease up in the fine lines. It doesn't look dried out and cakey. And like I said, it offers a ton of coverage, which is what I personally am looking for in a concealer. I normally stay away from potted concealers because I just think they're fussy. This one is not. It's worth every penny. It is so good. Okay, let's move on to some cheek products then. So I have... The Charlotte Tilbury bronzer here. This is the airbrush bronzer. I have it in shade two medium. The packaging is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I think all of her packaging is just so beautiful. Gigantic pan and the pan does pop out. So if you ever by some miracle do end up finishing it, you can buy a replacement and just pop it in and you don't have to buy the packaging nor does the packaging have to go into the garbage. I will say it is a very matte bronzer. So it goes down to personal preference. It doesn't bother me at all that it's matte. In the summer, I do tend to like a little bit more of a glow, but I have glowier options. Come fall, winter, matte is where it's at. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to rhyme, I really didn't, but there we are. There it is. It's like silk. <laughs> It is so soft. Her powder products are just so, so beautiful. I think the shade works really well on my skin tone and I think it's just a beautiful product. It blends out effortlessly. effortlessly. I think it's absolutely beautiful and of course the packaging takes it to the next level. But I did want to mention there is absolutely no glow in this bronzer whatsoever. On the polar opposite side though, this guy here has all the glow. So this one's from Melt and it is one of their Digital Dust Duo blushes in Buzzkill. And there are the shades in there. This is meant to be obviously a blush duo. I would argue that this is not much of a blush, at least not on my skin tone. So I will do finger swatches. I am wearing this on my cheeks today. The coral shade, this one right here, I think that's Buzz, yes. It is so gorgeous. So incredibly gorgeous. This one over here is, like I said, not a blush on my skin tone. And eventually, I imagine I'm just gonna end up mixing the two of them together simply because it is a split pan product. There is a little bit of a distinction between where those pans are. You can see like the little bit of space there between them. But practically speaking, eventually it is gonna become mixed together. At least that's what I predict. I think it's gonna be beautiful when it is swirled together, so I'm not too upset about that, but for now, I'm just mainly focusing on one side and then the other. But like I said, that is the blush that I'm using. I do have that lighter shade as well, but I have another highlighter on top of it just to kick it up a bit, um, simply because this one, it's not quite as highlighty as I would prefer it to be. But like I said, as a blush topper, it is very beautiful. 
These have been out for a little bit, but they're worth discussing. These are the Freestyle Cream Blushes from Fenty, of which I picked up three because why not? So I do have them applied to the back of my hand. I did pat them out and blend them out a little bit just so that you can see a little bit more realistically how they apply to the cheeks rather than a really like stark finger swatch. So here we go. This one here is Crush on Cupid. In the middle is Strawberry Dip. And then this one over here is Fuego Flush. I really like these products. I find that they blend out really easily, really nicely. There is good pigment payoff on them and they do last all day. They're not sticky. It's a good product. I will say Fuego Flush, not my favorite. It's really not. I was really hoping that I was going to love it because I do like a nice orange moment on the cheeks, but this one has like a shimmer in it. The other two do not, but this one does. And I think it kind of takes away from it. I think if it was more of a matte finish, I think it would have looked that much more flattering. But how I make it work is I use it as sort of like a highlighter or a blush topper. So I'll use more of a peachy kind of blush and then pat this out on top of it and then it looks really pretty, but on its own, on my skin tone, not particularly flattering. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but at least I found a workaround for it. The last cheek product that I have to talk about is from JD Glow, and this is one of their pressed highlighters in the shade Synopsis. In the pan, you can't really see just how pretty it is, so let's go ahead and swatch. It's got a very strong sort of blue shift to it, and it is beautiful and blinding. You could see this from space. Look at that. Look at it. It's very intense. Like it kind of has to be your thing <laughs> or else you're really not going to like this. Um, but I will say there is a bit of a glittery side to it. I don't mind it. It's not my day to day highlighter, but holy crap, is it ever gorgeous. Um, but just be aware that there is a bit of a glittery aspect to it. I don't find that it's like chunky or anything of that sort, but I mentioned that because some people really do like that, some people really don't, so it's good to know what you're getting into if you do decide to pick one of these up. I don't know if they're all glittery like that, this is my first time using one of their highlighters, but even just like a little goes a long way, I'm just spreading it out over the back of my hand. You can sheer it out so it's not quite as intense, but there's no hiding that. There's no way you're going to make it subtle. You can just tone it down a little bit. It is so beautiful. Okay, we're going to finish this one out with eyes. I've got a liquid eyeshadow to talk about and then three palettes and then we're done. So the liquid eyeshadow I'm going to talk about is from Too Faced. These are their Melted Chocolate Matte Eyeshadows. I have the shade Chocolate Chai, which I have already applied to my hand. And then this one here is Chocolate Wine. I'm going to apply it and then blend it out with a brush just so you can see what the application kind of looks like. So there it is. Doing this in the viewfinder is more challenging than one might think. So that's how I typically apply it at any rate. I just dab a little bit onto sort of the center of my lid and then I take a brush and just blend it up throughout the crease and over the lid. And it blends out really nicely and really easily and then it dries down. And once it dries down, it doesn't budge. These things do not crease, they don't flake off the eyes, they don't move around and end up in like one little line. They wear so nicely throughout the day. And I'm always reluctant, I'm always a little bit hesitant about liquid eyeshadows because when they're good, they're really good. And when they're bad, they're awful. Or when they're even just sort of okay, still awful. These ones are so nice. I'm really, really impressed with them. All right, on to the palettes. This one, again, it's been out for a while, but I haven't talked about it on my channel yet. And it is the Artist Couture Supreme Nudes Palette. First of all, I love how minimalist the packaging is. I think it's just so sleek and I like that. And then you open it up and it's just this beautiful, beautiful mixment, mixment, wow, mix of neutral shades. And honestly, they're so beautiful. I'm not going to swatch all of them. If you want like a dedicated review, I can do that. But 
There are a couple little standouts here. And I will say that the mats are just so nice as well. Like they're very smooth. They blend very nicely and they layer with each other without getting like muddy or gross. So here are three of them that I'll just do that. This one right here, like I could just apply that all over my face and be perfectly happy. I would look insane, but I would be perfectly happy. It's a beautiful palette. At first glance, I thought it was going to be really boring, but there is a really good mixture of shades, shades in here. And they all just play so nicely with each other. This kind of palette is right up my alley because especially for the work day, I just want to be able to grab and go with my palettes. I don't want to have to sit there and think about what's going to pair well with each other, what's not going to work with each other. If I blend this shade with this shade, is it going to turn muddy and gross? I don't have to worry about that with these shadows. I can just grab however, whatever colors, put them on my eyes and get out the door. And I know that it's going to look good because they all play so nicely with each other and the quality is there. I just, I really, really like that palette. But I don't always like neutrals. So the last two that I'm going to talk about are very colorful. For example, this one here. This is the Wild Child palette from Luana Cosmetics. It's a black owned company based out of Toronto in Ontario. And there she is on the inside. She is beautiful. But I also like that they've added a few neutral options that you can tone things down a little bit. But these shadows are just so, so beautiful. Again, I will swatch a few of them for you just so you can see how they perform. My God, these nails are long and it makes this a little bit tricky, but We'll power through. I can do this. I have faith. All right. So I'm just going to show you three. There, there. This one in particular is just so breathtaking. It's so beautiful. There we go. That purple didn't swatch very nicely. I was having a hard time picking it up with my finger, but I have worn that one applied with a brush a number of times, and I have no problems building up that pigmentation. I just think it's such a really nice selection of colors. It's incredibly fun. You can go monochromatic. You can pair up different colors with each other. This one allows for a lot more creativity. And like I said, it's just fun. So last but not least is the palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today. And that is from BH Cosmetics. This is the cherry on top palette and it's all pinks and I love it. I absolutely love this palette. I have so much buyer's remorse because I wish I had bought the green one and the blue one and the purple one. Also the orange one. Basically, I wish I'd bought all of them, except maybe the neutral one. I wasn't so big on that, but all the other ones I wish I had bought. I did not realize that BH Cosmetics could be this good. These mattes blend so, so nicely. The shimmers, beautiful. Like I just, they're so pretty. They're so stinking pretty. Like, look at that color payoff. Like, this is how you do monochromatic palettes. This, like I'm speechless, <laughs> even though I've just talked for like two minutes about this palette. It's so good. I have to swatch one more. It's like, look at that shade. I honestly don't think I have anything else quite like this in my collection. And look at how it swatches. Like it's so, so beautiful. I feel like I've probably hammered the point home, but like, don't sleep on these. They are so good. I'm pretty sure this one and the purple and the neutral one are still available on the BH Cosmetics site. Like I said, they're like $18. So, so good. Chef's kiss perfection. All right. And on that note, I'm going to wrap this video up. I would love to hear from you down below on what some of your recent purchases have been and whether you've loved them or hated them, or are you just kind of meh about anything? I always love hearing what you guys are purchasing and what you guys are enjoying or not. So let me know. And otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.